Get ready to set sail on a journey filled with laughter, surprises, and heartwarming moments. Romance on the High Seas is a 1948 movie that's packed with funny, shocking, and even sad moments. So, keep your eyes glued to the screen because you won't want to miss a thing. Starring some of classic Hollywood's finest actors, this film takes you on a delightful adventure full of twists and turns. As you watch, you'll find yourself captivated by the charming story and the talented performances. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions. Can you share a personal story of how this movie has inspired or impacted your life? And which classic Hollywood actor in this movie was your favorite? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, grab some popcorn, settle in, and get ready for a cinematic experience like no other. Romance on the High Seas will surely leave you with a smile on your face and a warm feeling in your heart. Don't miss out on all the fun. In a captivating debut performance, a certain actress lit up the screen in a musical comedy from the late 1940s. Her charm, lovely singing voice, and confidence were evident, supported by a strong cast from Warner Brothers. The movie's high-quality production, with its rich music and vivid colors, adds to its charm. Sometimes this gem appears on Turner Classic Movies, giving viewers a chance to travel back to the glamorous Hollywood of yesteryears. The movie's fancy costumes, grand sets, and distinctive hairstyles capture the spirit of a bygone era before modern styles took over. Even though time has passed, the film remains a delightful trip down memory lane, showcasing the enduring appeal of classic Hollywood entertainment. Don DeFore, a graduate of Washington High School in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, initially pursued law at the University of Iowa, but quickly realized it was the wrong path for him, expressing this sentiment less than a year into his studies. In the movie, audiences witnessed Rosemary Pettit's debut, marking her entry into the film industry. Doris Day, known for her role in the film, was not only an accomplished actress, but also a vocal supporter and close friend of President Ronald Reagan, the convergence of these individuals in Romance on the High Seas from 1948 provides a unique blend of backgrounds and talents, adding depth to the film's narrative. In 1948, a special movie hit theaters starring some famous actors. Doris Day, who was not just an actress, received a big award in 2004 from George W. Bush. But she couldn't accept it in person because she was really scared of flying. Eric Bloor Jr., whose dad was also an actor, was born in New York in 1927. He had a family connection to the movie business. Franklin Pangborn started acting on stage way back in 1911. He began in a play in Newark. Later, he became part of the movie world. These people had different backgrounds but came together to make a movie called Romance on the High Seas. It became a special part of movie history. In casting for the role of Georgia Garrett, Warner Brothers initially sought Judy Garland from MGM, but MGM declined to lend her. Mary Martin was also considered Betty Hutton was then chosen, but had to withdraw due to pregnancy before filming began. Don DeFore campaigned for his friend Ronald Reagan in 1976 in Des Moines, Iowa during Reagan's presidential bid. DeFore appeared in two films alongside Reagan brother Rat, and she's working her way through college. S.Z. Sekol, known as Shok Shekal during his school days, wrote sketches for Budapest vaudeville shows. He adopted the pen name meaning blonde beard, referencing his own beard, grown to make him look older when he turned to acting at 18. In the 1930s, S.C. Sekal emerged as a prominent figure in the Viennese light romantic comedy genre, standing alongside Hans Moser. The era recognized him for his contributions to Wiener film. Jack Carson, a pilot, attempted to enlist in the U.S. Army Air Corps during World War II, but faced rejection due to his height and flat feet. Despite this setback, he found another way to serve by entertaining General Douglas MacArthur's troops in the South Pacific. In 1982, the horror punk band The Misfits paid tribute to Myla Nermi, recording a song titled Vampira in her honor. These three individuals, each with unique stories, played diverse roles in their respective fields, contributing to the entertainment industry in distinctive ways. In a movie known for its memorable quotes, Oscar Levant's supporting role left a lasting impression. One of his famous remarks from this project was when he jokingly said, I knew her before she was a virgin, adding a light-hearted touch to the film's atmosphere. Amidst the unfolding story, Doris Day, a rising star at the time, faced an interesting twist. When she signed with Warner Brothers in 1947, they decided to tweak her birth year, making her 23 instead of 25. This change lasted until April 3, 2017, when the Associated Press uncovered her real birth year as 1922. Despite the studio's attempt to shape her image, Day always stuck to the truth about her age. The mix-up was blamed on a spokesperson's mistake rather than the actress herself. 
highlighting Day's career, she received a special tribute on August 12, 2018, dedicated to celebrating her significant role in the film world during the TCM Summer Under the Stars event. In the history of movies, this film isn't just a production, it's a backdrop to stories and discoveries that shape the legacies of those involved. After charming audiences and romance on the high seas, Leslie Brooks chose to step away from acting after getting married again. She wanted a quieter life away from the glitz of Hollywood. Don DeFore, known for his great work in movies, became a dad when his son Ronnie was born in 1950. With his family growing, Don's talent continued to shine. In another part of the music world, Doris Day showed off her singing skills in the song T for Two. The song was featured in a film called Put Him in a Box, Tie Him with a Ribbon, where Doris's performance made the movie even more special. She was not only a great singer, but also a fantastic actress. Even though their time in the spotlight ended, the stories of Leslie Brooks, Don DeFore, and Doris Day will always be remembered in Hollywood. Each of them left a unique mark on the film industry, inspiring fans for years to come. In 1948, a movie hit the screens, featuring talented individuals who left their mark in the film industry. Janie's Page celebrated her 100th birthday on September 16, 2022, gaining recognition across the nation. Doris Day, known for her roles in numerous films, expressed her fondness for Calamity Jane as her personal favorite among the 39 movies she starred in. Conversely, she regarded Where Were You When the Lights Went Out as her least favorite. Oscar Levant, a notable figure in the film, had a familial connection to Broadway through his brother Harry's Levant, who worked as a musical director and conductor. These individuals contributed to the success of the movie through their talent and dedication. In the realm of old Hollywood, a tale unfolds, revealing the intricacies of the entertainment world. During the mid-20th century, an actress found herself embarking on a cinematic journey, facing hurdles along the way due to her husband's control over her career decisions. Meanwhile, an actor encountered setbacks as major studios dropped him, citing a lack of star quality. Adding to the tapestry of connections, a seasoned actor's daughter pursued a stage career, sharing notable moments with industry luminaries. These behind-the-scenes dynamics shed light on the challenges and personal ties within the entertainment sphere at the time. In one of her early roles, Doris Day starred alongside Gordon Macri in Romance on the High Seas. Their on-screen chemistry led to collaborations in four more films, T for Two, The West Point Story, On Moonlight Bay, Starlift, and By the Light of the Silvery Moon. Don DeFore, who played a supporting role in Romance on the High Seas, originated the character Wally Myers in the Broadway play The Male Animal. He reprised the role in the film adaptation and later appeared in the remake titled She's Working Her Way Through College. Additionally, Doris Day was referenced in the song What Do We Do? We Fly, from the musical Do I Hear a Waltz, written by Richard Rogers and Stephen Sondheim. 